This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Ying.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Welcome to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Joan and Janet are subtle energy empaths who navigate consciousness. Their passion is to support you in your evolution. As consciousness, we are all one. One mind, one heart, free of all limitations. Experience this reality with us and discover how it can make a difference in your daily living. Join us in a state of grace as we explore, with warmth and humor, this thing we call life. Now, here are Joan Newcomb and Janet Barrett. Welcome to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. We're your co-host, Joan Newcomb, coming to you from Queens, New York. And my partner, Janet Barrett, is coming to you from Portland, Oregon. Hello, everyone. How nice to be with you again. And great, Joan, it's in Queens, New York. Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> yes. Who could be excited about that? We can't. <laughs> we're, we're so glad you're here. Right. You know, today we are talking about the uh, aftermath of the election of 2018. So yesterday the United States had an election and we're going to be talking about it from the perspective of consciousness. And it was a very dramatic election, uh, not maybe as dramatic as two years ago, but pretty dramatic. Uh, and we have survived it. We're still here. So we'll be looking at all that has gone on during the last two years and the fallout or, yeah, I guess the fallout from last <laughs> night in heart space. And what is the bigger picture? Why is this all happening? And stay tuned for the answers to these questions and more. And if you're enjoying being with us for our live shows and our podcasts, you can join us at our website, www.consciousconversationswithjoanandjanet.com. And there we've got all our shows as podcasts. Um, both Joan and I write blogs weekly, her on Monday, me on, no, 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 me on Monday, her on Friday. <laughs> there we go. Time is playing already. There is no time or space. <laughs> That's exactly, it's valuable here. And so lots of good things. We talk about what's going on in groups, what we notice in our personal lives, and just the flavor of what we notice about consciousness there. Lots of good information. You'll also find out about both Joan and I hold meetups. Um, myself in the Portland, Oregon area, Joan in the Puget Sound area when she's home, uh, and the schedules are there. We also each work individually with clients and groups, so uh, all of that information. And our Twitter, Facebook, YouTube links are on that site. So we also have a listener offner. Oh, <laughs> we've been running. Why I have troubles with that, Joan, I don't know. So... Do you want me to tell them about the listener offner? <laughs> Why don't or, I talk? I'll tell them it. about the listener offner. offner. That's called uh, Janetism. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, there you go. I'm thinking, who isn't Nick Offner? Anyway, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's not on our website. But if you go to our website, and sure. there'll be a pop up there, enter your email to get our updates, and we will give you special gifts. Janet's is oh uh, now you want me to talk <laughs> 4,972 top tips for enjoying life and okay. mine is a specific technique for helping you navigate life as consciousness I have my techniques are uh, on YouTube and also I have uh, courses that are on video and so I share one of those with you to help you transform your life. I love having people do it for themselves. So Janet is a fount of wisdom about enjoying life, and uh, I'm a fount of wisdom <laughs> about navigating it. So there you go. There's the images are just lovely. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. So I want to also tell you about our groups and I hold groups here in Portland um, through uh, meetup.com or I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry. The words are gone here Tuesdays evenings and Thursday afternoons at my home here in Portland. And you're more than welcome to join us where we just 
take we it, we put our hands on life and we just really work it. And also, if you're into a, if you're at a distance and would like the thrill of being in group with me, um, you can join me uh, Thursday afternoon. Thurs- oh dear, it's all yes. reorganizing. It okay, is. Fuzzy Photon Playground groups, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Pacific, and we use Zoom video conferencing live interactive you will feel stuff and very small groups right now and where wherever you are around the world you can uh email me at janet b at janet and beyond for the registration packet it's sliding scale so you can get started and just join us because we have profound funny lively exchanges so uh please consider doing that and joan you're while you're in new york and since that's kind of flexing how how are you organizing relating to people okay i have uh, i'm still doing readings and i'm doing sessions and i'm still doing coaching and i have a special coaching offer on my website uh if you go to joan-newcomb.com it's basically my summer coaching extended and you could still get sessions from me as well. I have been contemplating uh, having a meetup here in New York as well. I'm still researching where to have that. New York is a big place. There's a lot of people. Um, so uh, the way things are unfolding, I will be offering that December or January, the way it looks now. However, I am available for in-person as well as uh, Skype or Zoom sessions. So you can contact me, Joan at Joan Newcomb, about that. And I, I do want to put in a plug for Janet um, no. <laughs> because besides how fun it is to be at your meetups and your groups in your lovely home in Portland near Reed College, uh, I have to say that there is no distance as consciousness. And so you can enjoy her from the comfort of your own home and have just an amazing time. So your online groups there on uh, Thursdays are, are pretty fantastic. So. I gotta admit, they're pretty. They're pretty wild, and your device of choice. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, how do we feel in about now, Joan? I I feel it's pretty quiet out there. All that this aftermath. That well, we're I you, you know it was so interesting because you taking the finger in the pulse of people yesterday. There were a lot of people who were like staying off of social media and not turning mm-hmm. on the TV. It's like they just they didn't want to know. They were they've been they were so traumatized during the last <laughs> uh, during the presidential election two years ago and have been so traumatized during this this last two years that they have been just like not wanting to know. I have a friend who's a New Yorker. And she went in the other direction and she got herself signed up to be an inspector at the polling station yesterday. Whoa. She was yeah. all hot to trot and loving it so much. Uh-huh. She's going to do it again in, in two years. So she, she was like, she, she found her place. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, in the system. Exactly. Work, and I, working I, the system. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I, I mean, I had my doubts that I was pretty skeptical about, what the results were going to be because I know the manipulation and the hacking that has happened. And there certainly was that going on uh, in two places, the, the, in Georgia and in Texas there, that was going on. Uh, And so those results are there, but the, the really fun thing that I noticed is, uh, that was a comment from the from <laughs> <Nina> Gal- <Shari. laughs> um, the 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 really fun thing about this is this new wave of people coming into Congress that really resent represents uh, not it represents the majority of the people and it represents the energetic shift that is happening in in the world that is becoming more diversified, more inclusionary. If that's a word. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so the, the 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 energy is shifting into the last bastion of old paradigm power. Old white male power has been Washington D.C. Mm-hmm. And so, it's amazing to look at the people who ha- are the firsts that are represented. Uh, now in Congress, I, and I was amazed. It's like what you've never had a black woman before. 
you know, mm-hmm. like Massachusetts and Connecticut have uh, black women representatives now. To me, we're, you know, we're in the new millennium. I can't believe that it's taken that long. But we now also have, uh, there's two Native Americans uh, women. There are, there are two Muslim women. And one of the women, Muslim women representatives is an immigrant from Somalia. So that's really exciting. There's Latinas, uh, two Latina representatives in Texas. Uh, there's a, Liber- a Latina Democratic governor in New Mexico. There's a o- first openly gay representative in New Hampshire. There's a first openly gay man in who's the governor of Colorado, some of these places you would expect have been pretty liberal in the past. So um, there's just this wave of, um, the, it feels like the people are being more represented now than they have in the past. So it's going to, it's, it's a reflection of the ripple effect of change that has been going on collectively, and now it's showing up physically. So that's oh, what I see going on. So much good stuff. Let's take our break. How about that, Joan? And then we got we time? got a lively it's conversation. Time. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Janet is tracking time for Jane. <laughs> that's because I'm three hours ahead. I have no idea. That's right. <laughs> we have to stop for a commercial break, but stay tuned because we're talking about the election aftermath from the perspective of consciousness. Would you like a fresh approach to the challenges you are dealing with? Take a journey into your enlightenment with Janet Barrett. Janet is a subtle energies empath accessing the field of potential with warmth, humor, and support. She will help you to hear what your inner voice is saying. She will share with you how to appreciate who you are now and offer you new ways to understand and transform your issues. Reach her at www.janetandbeyond.com. That's JanetAndBeyond.com. Again, JanetAndBeyond.com. Transformation is possible. You can enjoy new outcomes in your current experiences. They can happen in the blink of an eye. Is your soul calling you to do something more meaningful with your life? Do you feel crazy for wanting to quit your secure job? Perhaps you are waiting until you retire to do what you love. Maybe you are too daunted to follow your dream. If any of these match your life, then Joan Newcomb's Purpose and Passion Coaching Program is just for you. In just 12 weeks, you will discover who you essentially are and why you are here. Learn to live as your greater self and navigate with conscious mastery. Go to joan-newcomb.com. That's joan-newcomb.com for all of her coaching programs. You are listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. To reach our program, please send questions and comments to Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. That's Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. Now, back to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Welcome back. You're listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. I'm your host, Joan, along here with Janet, and we're talking about the election aftermath of 2018. Now, we told them it'd be in heart space, too, Joan. So just to remind everybody, because what she and I have totally been noticing this morning is the quiet out there. So we want to make sure that you're noticing it also. So just take a moment. Just bring your focus wherever it goes to. And be appreciative that that heart is beating. And then notice the emotional terrain. And that may be hold all kinds of different information there this morning. But then go to that third meaning of heart. The core consciousness or the center of everything. And just allow yourself to notice what you notice. Don't judge it. But just make it real for yourself. And that's always present. And as we have been observing, uh, 
And what Joan was so so well describing before we went to commercial break is this new inclusion that has shown up. And as consciousness, that's what we've been tracking for the last couple of years about people participating, people that didn't vote before, who didn't feel motivated about something or appreciative, whatever the situation was in their personal stories, we are now feeling much more opening. And that's what's exciting is consciousness. And we're tracking it that way. So just... You got this far. I think that's part of it is the breath. Is that, oh, okay, I got noticed in some way. And that's for all of us, whatever our position and political place. And that's the excitement that's present underneath that quiet. So, And Joan, you're in New York City, one of the largest metropolises in the world, and all those people there. So what are you getting from that? Well, the interesting thing is, here's some perspective. Mm -hmm. Seattle has 700,000 people. Okay. Queens has like 2.5 million. (laughs) And I actually moved to Tacoma, and I don't have the population of Tacoma off the top of my head. It's a much smaller town than Seattle is. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I enjoyed about Tacoma was how diverse it was. Mm-hmm. And I would mention this to my husband when we'd go out to eat and all. And I grew up overseas. So I'm more comfortable being uh, in places where there's other languages spoken and things like that mm-hmm. than, you know, in some place that's all sort of bland. Point For one tone. One tone. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and I, so I was thinking about that because I am now in a place that is multicultural, multilingual, um, and even my, my brother is married to a, a woman who's Chinese, and so it's multilingual here. And I, he actually, I think, speaks at this moment, speaks Chinese better than he does English. So <laughs> um, it's, I, I am really in, enjoying the diversity. So when I was reading to you about the change in Congress that is sweeping over, uh, you, mm-hmm. you could say that New York typifies that initial waves because if you think when this country was formed and the waves of people coming and yes you know people came to you know virginia in 1640 and people came to massachusetts but the 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 place where the waves of immigration really funneled into this country was here in new york and this is incredibly dense group of groups of people who are new to this country as well and it's hard so their old country is really present there it's, right they're just new they were just I, new there so they brought I, all that yeah yeah and i can't yeah. i mean i also realized that that you can't really make all the broad sweeping generalizations mm-hmm. that I'm, I'm making but mm-hmm. energetically it's a very <laughs> dynamic place mm-hmm. and so I actually haven't been out on the streets yet this morning to to notice what specifically is happening with the people around, but I know that they they definitely spoke within their you know voting yesterday. They had to. It wasn't like Seattle, Washington State is a mail-in ballot. So I I voted two weeks ago. So 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 the but everybody yesterday had to go to the polls in order mm. to put their vote in. So it was a, mm. it's, a, it's a different intensity. And they're, you know, they're, they are creating huge amounts of change here as well. Um, so it's, it's very interesting to be here with this volume of people and actually notice that in some ways there's more space here than mm. back in uh, a le- well, actually, let's just say this. And sometimes there is more space in a more highly mm-hmm. population dense city mm-hmm. than there is in a small town. And mm-hmm. energetically, when you're in some place where there's a lot of distance between people, you cu- you're, it's like your aura relaxes and expands. Mm-hmm. So then you're more highly sensitive to the people who are within your mm-hmm. sphere. 
but when you're in a large population, people are um, tend are more pulled in and in order just to function together, they're they're more contained. So I've actually found it a lot easier in some regards being here. Mm. Mm. It's a very interesting thing. Anyhow, yeah, yeah, we're over the place yeah. with that. So mm-hmm. Janet, what you were noticing some. You you have been saying how you it feels quiet out there, and mm-hmm. what's your take on why it's so quiet? I think that recognition factor. I think we've been. Th- I th- this is always to me about the person, the people, and how they express them, how they are consciousness expressing themselves in that human form. And I think there has been so much energy up in so many different ways these last couple of years that. Um, people have started to process themselves or to find themselves or evolve themselves or to notice the difference between what they've been told they are as opposed to what they know themselves to be as opposed to what they think they are. Those, Those are very different states of awareness to hold about oneself. And I think that people are waking up in certain ways. Uh, they can be resistance. They can be it, anarchy. It can be, uh, and we've tracked that and talked about that for the last couple of years. And it's like t- that collective breath got taken last night. Wherever they participated, it was probably no matter how they participated, no matter how they voted, there was more of a sense of connection when they did it. And I think that's what I'm sensing is that shift may not be whatever your agenda is for uh, what your hopes and desire and wishes and protests were all about, that whatever dynamic happened yesterday and will continue to play out as they take in in more information and do results and stuff, but that it's the part of this shift that we're seeing the evolutionary leap. And so it may not be today that, oh, okay, everything's perfect. It may be five years. It may be 10 years. But I think once you get people in the door, which was what happened, we got people in the door. That means someone opened the door and someone went in. Then it falls to each of us what we do from that place. So, And then you see where the door was slammed shut and no change. And But there's more difference there. Well, you know, and as you were talking, what I was thinking about is how two years ago the change came in, which which was meant to break down the old paradigm. But mm-hmm. the way it did it at first was by being more extremely pronounced. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. all these things that just seemed, you know, from one perspective, you know, just so terrible and it's all just getting so worse and it's so mm-hmm. destructive. And what we're experiencing now is the pendulum beginning to swing to bring in the news. So we we would not have done this had the election two years ago been different. Right. It would. Who knows what it would have been, right? It might have been continuance of our complacency and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And that's what that's what got shook up, which is is all well and fine. And it's all out of the past. It's all those things we didn't notice, uh, all the different setups that we're each running and in our co-creation. And so everyone is in a different place as consciousness in their level of awareness of what they're playing and doing in life. And it's just, it feels, it has felt like, okay, how am I going to participate? And what am I looking for in being here? And um, there, there's still a lot to play out, right? There's all that emotional unrest. And now there's, I think, this emotional calm, at least for a little bit on some level. And, uh, and so we just keep to it. We just say, yes, okay. Inviting more is not always a fun place to be because we have an issue and an agenda already set up that something more or something different is going to challenge us. And it's how we feel about those challenges. So there we go. 
you know, life is always a process of change. <laughs> There's always yeah. going to be a, a breakdown and a breakthrough. Uh, I, and sometimes, sometimes the changes are more subtle. It, sometimes it's more like spring cleaning. And then sometimes it's like a friggin' remodel. <laughs> and By decimation. <laughs> exactly. It's like we thought we were just, you know, having a neat and tidy, yeah. you know, we we were just having a bathroom put in, kind of thing, and then we realized that there was Oops, the there termites, <laughs> and the plumbing has to be replaced in the entire house, and yeah. if suddenly we wake up and all all the sheetrock is gone, and there's contractors walking through our house, and it's like I thought I was just I was getting a master bathroom, <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of the level of change it seems like we're going through. Totally, totally. Uh, I think it's a chance for <sighs> where you want to go. It's a reset time. It's a reevaluation time. And it's, um, I think we all have to compliment ourselves. We ha- we, we're we here, right? And no matter where here is, we're here. And it doesn't matter who's there. It's where I am, where the and how are you doing with that? Have you surprised yourself? What What is it that you're realizing you feel empty of and that you're looking to fill? And so you act in certain ways. And oops. Hello. Yes, there's the universe. Another call from the universe. <laughs> well, take that off. Yeah, okay. So, um, you know, there's all kinds of ways and to to think that we could be at peace when we've been in such upheaval that's what calm is it's when everything is kind of settled and it'll and it's still moving it's still active it's not like flat it's a, this liveliness and it's like taking its breath and, and more power to all of us for that I like that you were speaking to beyond, you know, the political arena to what, like what's happening in our individual lives and how, you know, we're, how is that reflecting for you? What's it showing up like for you? And, uh, you, you know, are you might actually be going through just a, a simple spring cleaning rather than a remodel. In the uh, fall. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, these subjects are occasionally. There are people in other hemispheres listening to the show. That's right. So, oh, oh, we apologize. We didn't yeah, mean. Don't to, be uh, normal. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't be nor- northern hemispheric. Oh yeah, yeah. The, see those biases. Now this is that's a wonderful way of demonstrating bias, Joan. That we're not even aware we're in. Right. right. Is yeah. that you're in your orientation and you're in how your immediate world works. And yes, there's a world out there. And yes, there's another hemisphere. What does that mean? You know, it doesn't mean anything to me. Right. Until you realize how you've isolated or crafted this concept of who you are and where you are, etc. And it's that appreciation of other sensibilities and also as consciousness you do get more awareness of how you're just one part of the whole and there's these other parts and that's one thing that's fun about the the play groups that you know i'm doing on zoom because there's someone in new zealand and there's someone in colorado springs and there's someone in california and there's someone in tennessee and there's someone in albuquerque and we're all representing different time because there's different times that they're physically in that we've decided arbitrarily are good to have and they're in different spaces they're different cultures and we can feel each other we put our palms up and you can feel that connection and that just speaks to how, oh, okay, thanks for bringing that information in because I realized that I'm, I was in a bias, so that I, an unconscious one, right? And, or, and, I was, and a bias is just your framing, you know, it's just, and everybody's got them about everything. Um, and it's like, huh, okay, that feels better. So oh, thank you, Australia. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I, I was a client who's in Adelaide, and mm-hmm. yesterday I got 
on the call with her and she said, you've had a time change, haven't you? <laughs> they had theirs earlier, I think, right? I completely forgot. So she was yeah. on the call an hour beforehand and I had, I, I was doing something else that time. So you're, it's, it's arbitrary, but there is something about physical time and space. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and really then when you come down to it, it's, it's all a story in the hologram and we create, we each create our own holographic reality and you're, you're moving through time and space differently moment to moment anyway. So we just happen to be seeming to be in agreement at this time and space. But, but actually think about it, Janet, a huge amount of our listeners are listening from other times and space. Totally. Right. Right. Yep. And we thank all of you who are actively listening, <laughs> wherever you might be in whatever yeah. time and space that might be in. We usually, <laughs> yeah, we usually end the show talking about that. But yes, we can yeah. thank you right now in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> it is yeah. that. Whenever <laughs> you're listening to this, and if it's no longer 2018, you're yeah. still listening to this and contributing to the show. Yeah, because that's the, the dynamic, the reality we embrace, you know, in presenting this. And that's the state of awareness we hold, that there is malleable time and reality as consciousness. And it just has different references. And um, we get to catch ourselves and how we express. That's what's been so powerful about these last two years, Joan, is people saying something, presenting something, and realizing that those are just words. That that's the split between how they've rationalized and reasoned something and what they're really holding is their truth within themselves. And that's why this has been so dynamic, is because people have gone, okay, what am I doing here, right? And they're getting more congruent and in alignment with what their truth is as opposed to what they were told their truth was. And uh, we're going to see that shaken up everywhere. Yeah. My way of describing it is that we're all be embodying consciousness more. You're, mm -hmm. you're all consciousness coming more mm -hmm. into form. Mm -hmm. And the way that shows up is people collectively feeling more empowered. Mm-hmm. Feeling mm -hmm. that that inner power, and there, so there is both a, an individual growth and a collective growth. Since mm -hmm. we are all consciousness, there's a collective growth. So there's a rise in networking. There's a, but there's also a rise in individuality and people being unique in the way they define themselves as well. That was not, you know, allowed in the past. If you think about our. Um, we're being we're being North American United States centric. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of. I mean, I would say I pretty much any country that's listening has had waves of change of people coming mm -hmm. into it from different places. Mm -hmm. So um, I totally lost what I was about to go into. I guess <laughs> you've lost your boundary. <laughs> I did. I went all yeah. Around. World. Yeah, you went all over and, you know, you grew up in a, in several different cultures, right? Yes. You know, around the world. And that gives you a whole different framework. And I think what we know to be true is consciousness that those localities, that place of place, sense of place, is only... That sense of place. It has it is an anchoring mechanism. And so what we build is an identity around that anchoring mechanism. So then we put the family name, we put the community name, we put a country's name, we put a culture's name, and then we think we're that. And the truth is that there is no boundaries, and we can set up all the artificial constructs you want. It will impinge on the physical humanity. It will not on the conscious uh, that part of ourselves is consciousness so and this is what we're getting more congruent to i think so still don't know where i was going with what i was saying <laughs> well you hang there just a minute yeah i'll just i'll just swing on the pendulum for a little bit 
<laughs> well, there's a lot to be said for that. And I think you're probably reflecting, you know, it's not so much that we give people permission to be if you have to set it up that way. But I think that can be one of the effects is that you can feel that what if there's no border? What if there's no story? What if there's no, what if it's just you showing up free of these other things that have been so marked us, right? So we've been so tied to, and it's everybody rubbing shoulders against each other and then, because that's you recognize. I remember what I was talking about. Great. There you go. I filled in. Go for it. <laughs> Thank you. It had to do with us being a melting pot. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the, the idea of America, the great melting pot. So everybody comes into the United States and then they all become American, which means they all have to speak English. You know, they all you know, have to be a Presbyterian or something. And we all have to, they all have to blend in which resulted in lots of people, you know, not have being able to speak their, their parents' native language, which is, I just think, so criminal not to, you could have been bilingual or trilingual. Yeah. And when I, I lived in Canada for high school and discovered that they don't, they welcome people to retain their, their national, nationality of origin because they see themselves as a mosaic. Mm -hmm. but just think about it a mosaic mm -hmm. every tile is unique and beautiful and but the entire picture would be would be lacking if you if a tile was missing so each tile is really important but it's also allowed it's it's boundary it's allowed it's uniqueness mm -hmm. and so the the problem with the united states being a melting pot is you know everything smudges into a blur as opposed to allowing people co to come and be the individuals that they are. And I think we're becoming more of a mosaic. That's what's happening. Well, and I think that's all in um, how we use our language and how we have intention and, and missions and purposes and stuff. That sounds like what I feel the U.S. is. So good to you, Canada. That that you know, and I love any time I go to Canada because they have they, there's a there's a relaxed state there. It's certainly very courteous. Like Cameron, our sound engineer, who commented on how I am so fluent in something. <laughs> it's Jan earlier. You, Janetism. It was a Janetism. Yeah, you know they're sharp up there. Um, and you you. He's Canadian. Uh, the point. Yeah. Is. Yeah, I think that's what I was thinking. It, th what that melting pot is of all the elements, that's what makes a good stew, right? It's not things dissolved down, it's the little bit of each of it that blends together and you you get something. So the mosaic is totally appropriate in the in the melting pot if you pr if you if you sense that cohesiveness like that. And um that's what I, that's the way I hold myself to be, is who are you, um, and you're me, so, but you look different, and, you know, it's all coming from the place that we're all one in that, so, um, yeah, you know, I think countries are, with all the immigrants everywhere, and whether they're seeking asylum or whatever their directions, people have always been on the move, we're all out of Africa, and, um, you know, how that interacts and how it shows up today and what happened to all those millions years ago. Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, you were talking about how you or me. And uh, th when I really shift my perspective into that as consciousness, it, that language does not describe. And so I see that everyone is consciousness but not everyone's me mm -hmm. because you know me is an I identification oh i see yeah so, so i'm holding when i say no. me yeah. it becomes uh, oh you're a reflection of me as yeah. opposed to yeah. everything is a creation of consciousness you are consciousness creating your experience i'm consciousness creating my experience i have created the storyline that has excuse me that has you in it and i'm experiencing you from within my hologram and Janet, you're having a completely different experience 
from within your hologram. So it's, 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 it's very complex. And uh, somebody asked me the other day uh, about um, is duality 3D and is, is one, oneness 5D? Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, that's a very interesting way to look at it because mm-hmm. this, mm-hmm. this planet is a, one of dichotomies. This planet mm-hmm. is one of polarities and, and therefore separateness. And consciousness is, it's, you can't even use the word unity and you can't even really use the word one because there just aren't, numbers just don't exist in that mm-hmm. experience. And that is the essence of who we are is consciousness. So um, that's, so, so I'm aware of consciousness and that we are all consciousness. So there I can allow you know, for in the storyline, if somebody is standing there being unconscious, um, I can have a huge judgment about that. Often I do. And yet I realize that at the same time, no, wait, their consciousness being unconscious. Well, you know, I tend to always write and lead anything with consciousness and, and it's the human condition. So when I use the word I, it's not necessarily the me that one might associate with it because it's, it's always been an open field for me. So my own self-identity is really quite small in that. And it's we're all at different places with how we interact, you know. The core of consciousness is what we're talking about, and we tend to think core as the small center of something. But as consciousness, everything is within the core of as con- of consciousness. There's nothing outside of consciousness. And so it is this incredibly expansive reference that none of us pretty much can really track in that sense of how how whatever all and we're just these individual flavors showing up and and we're all participating and it's kind of for me my reference is when i meet someone i haven't met before well how do you look at them how do you how do you have a sense of them for me it's like oh there you are it's there they may be stranger in the sense that I haven't met before, but they're not stranger in the sense that there's something weird and different. They are, oh, there you are. And I like living that way. And I know a lot of people don't. But for me, that's just the way it is. And I think if more people were aware that we are all one and we're just what is that statement about this meeting a stranger but there are no strangers i don't i'm not remembering i'll have to ask cameron um you know it's about how we organize participating and uh that's what's so fun and exciting right now and very peaceful at the yes. same time yeah this is this is very peaceful here well i have to say janet you know in heart space, it feels peaceful. Peaceful. It feels, it feels pizza, and I can be peacefully pizza. And that is what I notice is when I shift into consciousness, regardless of the drama in the storyline that's going on. There's, um, there is a sense of peacefulness, and it doesn't mean that you're being, you know. Um, uh, detached or any of those sorts mm-hmm. of things. Yeah. It's that you're um, that you're you're able to maintain your sense of uh, awareness in the midst of all the wonderful stuff happening in the world today, too. Well, and I think uh, we have to really credit all of us that have been paying attention to this conversation for the last couple of years and before. You know, you and I are not the only ones who have been looking at life in from the bigger perception of as consciousness. It, we've all been supporting and holding that we are much more than what we show up as. And th- I think that's what's helpful here and what we're aware is in action so is it time for our commercial break i think Mm. that our little magical fairy from canada (laughs) there that serves him right to let us know (laughs) 
Sea of the Silvery Buns. Um, (laughs) We do have to stop for a commercial break. We will be coming right back uh, after this break, talking about election aftermath in 2018. So stay tuned. Would you like a fresh approach to the challenges you are dealing with? Take a journey into your enlightenment with Janet Barrett. Janet is a subtle energies empath, accessing the field of potential with warmth, humor, and support. She will help you to hear what your inner voice is saying. She will share with you how to appreciate who you are now and offer you new ways to understand and transform your issues. Reach her at www.janetandbeyond.com. That's JanetAndBeyond.com. Again, JanetAndBeyond.com. Transformation is possible. You can enjoy new outcomes in your current experiences. They can happen in the blink of an eye. Is your soul calling you to do something more meaningful with your life? Do you feel crazy for wanting to quit your secure job? Perhaps you are waiting until you retire to do what you love. Maybe you are too daunted to follow your dream. If any of these match your life, then Joan Newcomb's Purpose and Passion Coaching Program is just for you. In just 12 weeks, you will discover who you essentially are and why you are here. Learn to live as your greater self and navigate with conscious mastery. Go to joan-newcomb.com. That's joan-newcomb.com for all of her coaching programs. You are listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. To reach our program, please send questions and comments to Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. That's Conscious with Joan and Janet at gmail.com. Now, back to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. Welcome back. You're listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. And I'm Joan along here with Janet. And we've been talking about election aftermath in 2018. We've been kind of talking about aftermath, huh? Right. Yes. You know, I mean, we, we can term it related to election. But we, it's really the aftermath of just a lot of inner stuff showing up, I think. And what you want to do with it, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Everybody breathe. Let's get get that fresh new alignment. Let everything integrate. You know, you're not we're we're not even aware so of everything dynamically within us. So just just be open. Notice what happens when you relax. It's a powerful place to be. So anything else we want to add about this incredible subject? <laughs> Well, I, I appreciate that we can feel so calm after the storm. Yeah, because there's plenty of stuff to be up, you know, to go on about, right? Right. And, yeah, and the, and everything is going to start right up because that's what that's the way things happen. There is no still point necessarily, except if you expand this moment. That's how you do that. So how be in this moment? And that takes you to another moment and then another moment. And life is really about these moments as opposed to a lifetime. We lose so much when we when we put it in those terms. It's really about the moment. Yes. Being in the present moment is incredibly mm-hmm. expansive. Mm-hmm. Well, it's where you'll meet consciousness, right? Yes. It's where you'll... Wake up to that it is in the moment where you stop, like Eckhart Tolle talks about, let go of the past, and in that space between the next breath of what the future is, there's the present. And it's really recognizing how we carry so much of the past into our present, and then that the future is really not any future, it's the past just moving forward. <laughs> you know, so, so the present is a very important place to be. So... It's a gift. <laughs> it's a work of art, right? I don't know that everyone gets appreciates their skills. 
and their natural attributes and abilities. Because maybe they're not supposed to. But you and I will take the time to appreciate that for ourselves and each other and everyone out there listening. Yes. So I want to let people know that if you like us, you really like us, (laughs) then find out more about us by visiting our show website, Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet dot com. There you can listen to all our podcasts. You can also read our blogs. We write them regularly. You can Find out uh, about our meetups. Janet has hers in Portland, and I have mine in lots of different places. Uh, We also do (laughs) sessions. Janet's sessions, uh, she and I both do sessions by Zoom, Skype, or by phone. Um, I also have a YouTube channel. You can see my posts on the YouTube channel there. You can also see our web our youtube channel conscious conversations with joan and janet we have all of our podcasts on there so that if that's your your happy medium you can go there to listen to us and we have links to our social media twitter facebook youtube are on the site as well janet are you up to telling them about the listener offer (laughs) (laughs) yeah listeners i got an offer for you If you sign up uh, on our conscious www.consciousconversationswithjoanandjanet.com, um, you will get as a gift from uh, me a list. Oh, and I think there's like 13. How to enjoy life? What What have I noticed? I have a lot of experience, and I am enjoying life. So how's that happen? And maybe there's something there that'll help you along. And then Joan, you've got what are you providing for that that that's individual lucky individual there we go they're lucky individuals i have (laughs) coaching programs i I have coaching programs i'm also doing individual readings no the the offner thing the offner thing i completely (laughs) forgotten because i'm on (laughs) my next thing so actually what it is it is a it is a special technique okay and any moment now i'll remember exactly what that technique is (laughs) but it is a special technique for technique for transforming your life and people have found it very potent and transformative it's no. a mystery. Go find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not enough things to just, oh, be curious. We're supporting you being curious and going forward and trying something different. So, um, and I guess this is a good time to mention our guest next week, Joan. Um, it is so appropriate, and I would like to think that we put this into the design. Um, next week, we have life strategists Kathy Hertz and Donna Lippman, and they have an empowering new book just released called Beyond Resistance, Coping with the Stress of the Trump Era, an Essential Guide. So you can see how it's timely here and they're going to share with us how to know when you're in a state of overwhelm and when it's time to call upon your self-care tools and being recognizing yourself as consciousness is the biggest of all self-care so they say and let me get this quote correctly we will help you clarify who you want to be what you want to do and how you want to do it you'll experience shifts in perspectives that will not only have a positive impact on stress resulting from our current political reality but also will help ripple through the rest of your life sounds good sounds reaffirming sounds like something that to listen for and to enjoy for next week so you guys have a lot of fun a lot of fun right and we didn't know what kind of fun it's going to be. We're just open to the possibilities. <laughs> and it sounds like these two women have a broad background in politics and all kinds of different things. So, Very interesting. It will be a very interesting conversation. I will enjoy listening to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're letting them know you're not going to be with us next week. Huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it life interesting? I mean... It's how well you handle the unexpected, which, you know, is always at our design, but it's how we get to that unexpected. Yeah. yeah. That's what consciousness is improvisational, and uh, yeah. it is it is all a wondrous creation in the very moment. Again, yeah. we actually, we mentioned this earlier, but we do want to thank everybody for listening. Regardless of what time or space you're listening, you are contributing to the morphic field of now. So we really appreciate your presence. There's so much to enjoy, people. Everybody, take a breath. <laughs>
Just relax into it. And everything is working. We we hear so much chatter about that things are in a bad shape and democracy is failing and all that. And I would offer to you that it's working. And it's requiring you to participate, which is what it's always been about. So um, no matter how it was designed, <laughs> with the intention between the men that designed it and took that from the Iroquois Nation beat. Just let's make sure about that, the Constitution and what it embodies. It was how to live together, how those five tribes work yeah. together. So there we go. You've been listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. I'm your host, Joan, along with the Janet. And thank you, everyone. It's been a delight to be with you. <laughs> Same time, different channels. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet. And thanks so much for helping to co-create the show, no matter if you're listening live or on demand. You energetically contribute to our collective experience. Joan and Janet love to hear from you and invite you to email your comments and ideas for them to explore each week. Contact them at ConsciousWithJoanAndJanet at gmail.com. Tune in next week for another great show. And until then, keep enjoying this wonderful adventure we call life.